Hey guys, it's Chet from MTG Unlimited, and today I'm going to do a little bit of a con spoiler review type thing. Now, basically, I'm just going to go over all the cards that have been spoiled so far. Uh, I will not be going over any uncommons or commons, but I will give you a site link that has all of the cards so you can keep updated, plus you can see all the cards that we don't go over. So, let's get into it. So first we have Anaphasa the Foremost. She is a 4-4, and she is the leader of, I don't know which clan that is, but a clan. Um, she's a legendary creature, she's a human soldier, and her abilities are whenever an Anaphase of the Foremost attacks, but a 1-1 counter on another target taps creature you control. If a, tar if a creature card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. So, um, I guess that's to combat the, uh... I think it's the Sidisi Blood Tyrant that like clan, which is next. You'll see in a second. Um, so you'll you'll see that you'll see what I'm talking about and everything. Next we have Narset Enlightened Master. Now this is the leader of the Enlightened Clan. I want to call them. I don't know exactly what their uh, name is. I don't know actually most of the clan's names, but uh, she is a first strike hexproof three two. Whenever an Arset, Enlightened Master, and attacks, exile the top four cards of your library. Until end of turn, you may cast non-creatures cards, exile the Narset this turn without paying their mana cost. Pretty good. Um, I'm uh, Murica is looking really nice, so I would keep your eye on Murica. Sidisi Blood Tyrant. Uh, she is a one of the Khan's leaders. Uh, she is a 3-3 three, three whenever Sidisi Blood Tyrant enters the battlefield or attacks. Put the top three cards of your library into the into your graveyard. Whenever one or, one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from your battlefield or from your library, put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. So, I mean, um, she's going to be overpowering in some instances. Uh, a lot of, uh, not discard, but mill decks, or I think that's going to be kind of common, so... Uh, I mean, if you're into that stuff, I would play it. That would be kind of fun. I'd like to see some decks like that. See, the Unwritten is a 6-drop, 2 forest, 4 monocolored. Uh, it is reveal the top 8 cards of your library. You may put a creature card from among them into the or onto the battlefield. Put the rest of them onto your graveyard. Ferocious, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, you may put 2 creature cards on the battlefield instead of 1. That's pretty good, especially for the fact that you can put any creature down. So if Eldrazi are coming back, which people are saying that they are, uh, that would be kind of interesting to see played. Uh, on to the next card. Next we have Avalanche Tusker. Avalanche Tusker is a uh, 5 mana, a green, a blue, a red, and a 2 monocolored. It is a 4-4 Elephant Warrior creature, and whenever Avalanche Tusker attacks, target creature Defending player controls blocks this combat of able. So it's a 4 4 and it allows basically you to kill off any of their creatures as long as they're lower than you are. So that's really nice. Um, so yeah, next card. This is Ankle Shanker. Ankle Shanker is the Mardu clan. He is a red, a plains, a swamp, and two monocolored. He's a 3 3 haste whenever Ankle Shanker attacks. Creatures you control gain first strike and death touch until end of turn. So basically, he turns every one of your creatures into a master of cruelties. Or, well, basically just an, a huge fucking destroyer that, uh, yeah, basically you just kill any creature in your path. Next we have Va Vakshasa Vizier. He is a 5-drop for 1 Swamp, 1 Forest, 1 Island, 2 Monocolored. He's a 4-4 four, four Cat Demon. Whenever one or more cards are put into your... Or wait, are put into exile from your graveyard, put that many plus 1 plus 1 counters on Vakasara Vizier. I don't really know how to pr pronounce that. But, um, so basically, Sidisi will put cards into... Or, well, uh, gives you rewards, um, for putting creatures in your graveyard. And then, uh, if somebody's playing Anafaza, uh, and you have Vakshaza out, then you're basically still getting Winrar, or, well, wins. So, I mean, that's, uh, something to keep in mind. If you're playing Sidisi, you should definitely play Shaksaza. 
Next we have Ivory Tusk Fortress. Now, I'm pretty sure Nick already went over this, but I put this in here because I'm pretty sure it got new art. Um, the old art didn't look as good as this one. I do like the change in art. I don't know how you guys feel on it. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Okay, now we're going to get in some of the Ascendancies. Now, uh, Ascendancies are usually three drops, and they are Colors of the Clan. For this one, it is a Timur Ascendancy. It is a green, a island, and a mountain. It's an enchantment. Creatures you control have haste. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. So that's pretty good, uh, especially with combination, I'm pretty sure, uh, what is it? Oh no, um, never mind. Uh, basically... I'm I'm hoping that their clan leader reflects that, as in, like, whenever he attacks, you may put down a creature from your hand onto the battlefield attacking with him, because that would be pretty nice, especially with the fact that it's all about high creatures and stuff. So, uh, hopefully that comes out. Next, we have Mardu uh, Ascendancy. It is a red, a white, and a black, as you would guess, and is an enchantment, and whenever a non-token creature with... You control attacks, put a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Sacrifice Mardu ascend Ascendancy. Creatures you control get plus 0, plus 3 until end of turn. Pretty nice, especially for the fact that you get extra attackers. And the fact that you can uh, get a lot of attackers with it. It's a huge amount of damage, especially with the uh, Naya deck. I'm thinking about tying the two in to each other. Because imagine attacking with the infinite amount of... Uh, 1-1 one, one flyers, and then putting an infinite a number down of uh, red goblins, and then they can't bioblight both. So, I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, either way. Pretty good card, either way. Next we have Flying Crane Technique. It is a 6-drop, 1 island, 1 mountain, 1 plains, and 3 monocolored. It is an instant, and it's untap all creatures you control. Creatures you control again, flying, double strike, until end of turn. Pretty good, I mean, that does, I mean, it, it's a lot of damage really fast, so I would keep that. Uh, if you are playing Murica, I would definitely keep that in mind, because that is something that you definitely want to play. So now we have the... Abzan, uh, Ascendantry. No, it is a plains, a swamp, and a, uh, forest. It's an enchantment, and whenever, uh, Abzan Ascendancy enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token onto the battlefield, or with flying onto the battlefield. So, um, that's pretty good. I mean, it, basically, whenever one of your creatures dies, you just get another, so that's pretty nice to have in your back pocket. Wing make or wing mate rock five drop two planes three monocolored three four flyer with raid. Whenever wing mate rock enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, put a three four white bird creature token onto the battlefield with flying. Whenever wing wing mate rock attacks, you gain one life for each attacking creature. So basically. You get to put, then that raid ability is only there so that you get to put down more creatures to attack with to get more life. And if they have no creatures to block with, well, you just screwed them over. So, GG. Uh, I, I kind of like this card a lot. I'm definitely going to be playing it. It's really fun to me. So, uh, other than that, just a good card. So next we have Howler of the Horde. So that is a 3-drop, 1 uh, mountain, 2 monocolored. It is a sorcery. Whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Raid. If you attacked with a creature this turn, you may cast your next instant sorcery spell this turn. Ca uh, copy that spell <laughs> an additional time. You may choose new targets for the copy. So basically, you play a spell. You can copy it again, and then once ra if raid triggers, you can copy it again. So, for instance, you lava axe. Say you hit with them with a five five, it went through. You lava axe. I don't know how you have that much mana, or you can do this too. You hit for five with lava axe. You do this, it copies again. That's a ten, and then raid triggers, so it's fifteen. So I mean, that's a lot of damage. 
Um, I'm personally thinking about throwing this into my gutter snipe deck because it's freaking amazing. So, uh, yeah, all around good card. Next, we have Necropolis Fiend. Necropolis Fiend is a 9 drop. Oof, lots of mana. He is a 2 swamp, 7 mana colored, 4 5 creature demon. He has flying, and he has delve. Now, what delve does is each card you exile from your graveyard while casting the spell pays for 1 mana colored. Now, X and tap, exile X cards from your tar graveyard, target creature gets minus X minus X till end of turn. Uh, pretty good, but I mean, I don't think a lot of people are playing him because 9-drop, kind of mana-sensitive. I don't like that at all. So next we have Dragon Style Twins. Dragon Style Twins is a 5-drop, 2 mountains, 3 monocolored, 3-3. Three, three. Now it has Double Strike and Prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus 1, plus 1 till end of turn. So... Double Strike and Prowess. If you read back to Narset Enlightened Master, I mean, you can literally just play Narset and Dragon Style and pretty much win the game. And Jeskai Elder. I mean, it's just, it's really, I, I feel like Murica is going to be the way to go, but also Mardu, uh, which is Kalia Colors. Because they're both really good. I recommend either one of those colors. But uh, the other clans are pretty good too. And we haven't seen much yet from... Uh, what is it? Timur. So uh, definitely keep in mind that they are still there. But, but we have not seen much from them. Which uh, makes me excited for when they're unveiled. So uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a possibility. So here we have Dune Blast. Uh, I actually don't have this pulled up yet. Give me one second. Okay. Dune Blast is 7 mana. It is a forest, a swamp, a plains, and 4 mono colored. It is a sorcery. Choose up to one creature. Destroy the rest. So basically, kill everything except one thing. So, yeah. Kill everything except one thing. I guess that's all I have to really say about that. That's um, it, It's only sorcery speed, which kind of sucks. Um, but still, I mean, you get to kill everything except, like, one of your creatures, and then you get to swing on that turn. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's whatever, I guess. It's, it's okay. I, I like it. I like it a lot, but it's, uh, it's only okay. Uh, I, I don't really recommend playing it, to be honest, because board wipes, I don't think, aren't really going to be needed too much. But, um, we'll see at some point. We'll definitely see if they are needed. Next, we have Herald of Anaphaza. Uh, he's a one-drop, which is really nice. He's the first one-drop we've actually seen so far, I think. Um, he is a rare, too, so don't forget that. He's a human soldier, he is a one-two, and he has Outlast. Now, this is the first time we've actually heard of this. Outlast, uh, is two monocolored and one planes, at least for him. It's put a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. Outlast only as a sorcery. So you do have to tap him, I believe. Yeah, you do have to tap him in order to do that, but that's still pretty cool, I guess. I mean, you can pump him a ton. Um, his second ability is whenever you activate Herald of Anaphaz's Outlast ability, put a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token onto the battlefield. So, I mean, you get those creature tokens, plus you get Outlast. So, um... I definitely want to play him a lot. I mean, I'm probably going to play him in my Mardu deck, just because he's really aggro. You play him, and then turn three, you can start getting more creatures. But, um, I don't know. He's, uh, he's there, but he's not there. We'll have to see. Rattleclaw Mystic, our first mana pumper. He is a 2-drop, too, which is really nice. Okay, so 1 forest, 1 mana color, 2, 1 human shaman. Tap and add either a forest, a island, or a mountain to your mana pool. He is a morph for 2. You may cast this card face down as a 2-2 two -two creature for 3 mana, and turn it face up any time for its morph cost, which would be 3. Um, I believe, no, for 2. So, uh, when Rattleclaw Mystic is turned face up, add a forest, an island, and a mountain to your mana pool. So basically, you can play him upside down for 
uh, three. Yeah, for three. And then when you turn them face up, uh, for instance, on turn four, uh, for two, you get two of your mana back and another one. So you basically, I guess you get another mana. I guess it is kind of mana pumping, but it's also not. But uh, I, I, still, I still think it's really good. I would definitely play it, and uh, I guess that's Timber decks. So yeah, definitely keep him in mind. Next we have Crackling Doom, which is probably one of my favorite cards so far. It is a 3-drop for 1 Mountain, 1 Plains, and 1 Swamp. It is an instant spell. Crackling Doom deals 2 damage to each opponent. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures he or she controls. So basically, um, usually that means, uh, first of all, kill your, uh, kill your clan leader. Then second of all... It deals two damage to them. So, I mean, you get them to sacrifice something, and you get them down to. I, I think it's pretty good, but it's also kind of iffy. It's um, it's something that you only really play if they have some high-ass creature that you need to get off the field. So, yeah. I guess uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty good card. I want to say it's good, but I also don't want to say it's good. It's kind of like a substitute hero's downfall, but um, the only thing is that you don't choose the target, which kind of sucks. Next we have End Hostilities. End Hostilities is a 5 drop, 2 planes, 3 monocolored, sorcery, destroy all creatures, and all permanents are permanents attached to creatures. So, um, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, I think that it's, uh, I mean, it's obviously a kill spell, but, the, or, well, not kill spell, but board wipe. But, um, I feel like, uh, what is it? I think this is Az Abzan, the Abzan clan. They're so, they're pretty stacked on board wipes already. They already have two. So, I mean, um, I feel like they're gonna be like the Azorias, Azorias, where they're kinda like Justicars. So, um, I don't really like their clan already. So, uh, yeah, that's it for that card. So we have our first Planeswalker appearance now, and you have no idea how happy I am that this came. Sarkin the Dragon Speaker, he's a 5-drop. He has 2 mountains, 3 monocolored, he starts out with 4 loyalty counters now. Uh, his plus 1 is until end of turn, Sarkin the Dragon Speaker becomes a legendary 4-4 red dragon creature token, or creature, with uh, flying, indestructible, and haste. Um, he doesn't have loyalty counters, but in... Uh, he doesn't lose loyalty while he's not a planeswalker. His minus three is Sark and the Dragon Speaker deals four damage to target creature, and his minus six is you get an emblem with at the beginning of your draw step, draw two additional cards at the end of your beginning step, or at the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. So I mean, um he's okay. I don't really like him too much. I was hoping for something for my EDH, but that's not really what I got. But he is very aggro with that plus one. You put him down and immediately do four damage with him, which is Pretty nice too. I kind of like that. Plus, um, his minus four or minus three, which does four damage, basically takes out any creature on the board unless it's pumped. So that's pretty nice. So I'm kind of liking the new Sarkin. Soren, seldom visitor, is the next Planeswalker appearance. He's a four drop for one swamp and one plains, two monocolored. He is a uh he starts out at four loyalty counters and he has a plus one for until your next turn. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain lifelink. His minus two is to put a two two black vampire creature token with flying out of the battlefield, and minus six, you get an emblem with at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. Pretty nice in my opinion. I kinda like it. I'm definitely gonna be playing him. He's pretty overpowered, but he's also just pretty balanced. I mean, I, I definitely like him. He's definitely good in my opinion. So, um, yeah, next card. Next we have Utter End. Utter End is a 4-drop for, four drop for a Swamp, a Plains, and two Monocolored. Instant. Exile target non-land permanent. 
So basically, uh, I'm definitely gonna be playing it. It's kind of like a hero's downfall where you just take something out. So um, I'm kind of happy about it. I definitely am going to be playing him. I'm definitely going to be using it a lot. So uh, good kill spell. Next card. Next we have Sagu Mauler. Sagu Mauler is a 6 drop for 1 islands, a 1 forest, and 4 monocolored. He is a beast, he has trample, and hexproof. He has a morph cost for 3 monocolored, 1 forest, and 1 island. You may cast this card face down as a 2-2 two -two creature for 3. Turn it up face, or turn it face up for any time for its morph cost, which I just said. Um, you don't really get out anything out of the morph, so I wouldn't do it. But he is a 6-6 six, six with Trample and Hexproof, so he's pretty good. Uh, next card. Next we have Ghostfire Blade, which is a 1-drop. Equip creature gets plus 2, plus 2. Equip is 3. And Ghostfire Blade, equip ability, costs 2 less to activate if it targets a colorless creature. So basically, you can equip it for 1 mana if you're targeting an artifact, which, if Eldrazi do come, that's going to be pretty good. So, uh, Mutavault is actually cycling, I believe, so never mind, that doesn't work. But um, I was going to say, you can attach it to Mutavault when it's a creature and just rape, but um, that won't work. So, uh, pretty good card, pretty good equipment. Um, I mean, it's okay if you're attaching it to a artifact, but other than that, it's, uh, it, it's meh. Meh. So, next card. Urgen's Nexus, or, uh, Ugin's, Ugin's Nexus, sorry, I finally figured that out. Okay, he's a 5-drop, legendary artifact. If a player would begin an extra turn, uh, that player skips that turn instead. If Ugin's Nexus would be put into a graveyard from the, from the battlefield, instead exile it and take an extra turn after this one. So, um, what I'm thinking is that I'm going to put this into the blue-red artifact standard deck that Nick made, and use Shrapnel Blast on it, get an extra turn, swing with Skittles again, and then sacrifice Skittles with Shrapnel Blast and do a ton of damage. Uh, and along with Ghostfire Blade in that deck, I think that deck can be really ramped. So, uh, yeah, I, th I like that card a lot because there's lots of ways to ab abuse it. But, um, yeah, I I'm definitely looking forward to using that card. So, now we have the fetch lands. Now, the fetch lands that were reprinted was Windswept Health, or Heath, sorry, which is uh, Green White, Flooded Strand, which is White Blue, Polluted Delta, which is Black Blue, Bloodstained Mire, which is Red Black, uh, Wooded Foothills, which is Red Green. So, um, those were that. So, I'm going to talk about news and cons. Now, cons is... Uh, believed to be time travel by a lot of people. I don't know if that's true. To me, I think that's a load of bullshit, to be honest, but uh, it's it's whatever. It's I like playing the game, so if they want to say that time travel happened, I'm happy to accept it. So, um, also, people have been thinking that Aldrazi are coming, which I fully support that opinion. Uh, there's a lot of things like saying that it'll come... Um, Ugin's Nexus kind of points towards the fact that Ugin is finally coming, but, um, we don't know for sure, so hopefully that does happen, because I am one to fully support, like, all the Eldrazi coming back. I definitely want to see it happen, because I can make an easy deck where we're just tutoring up Eldrazi and throwing them down at people and just screwing everything up. So, um, yeah, that's there. Um, also... Anything that you guys have to say about cons or anything like that in particular, just anything about uh, new sets, any conspiracies or anything like that, um, the the comment section is uh, open for them. So if you guys want to go in there and just like start saying like you think the Eldrazi is coming back because of this reason, this reason, and this reason. Go ahead, because I will not judge you. No one in the, uh, no one on our channel will be like, uh, fuck you. You need to go away. And I'm sure everybody in the comment section, all of the subs, 
will happily talk to you. Uh, I want to support you guys actually talking in the comments because it's really fun to see what you, like you guys interacting with us and the other subs. Because uh, not only does it give us feedback a lot of the time, but you guys also uh, seem to just like help out each other a lot more, I guess. It just kind of brings the community closer. So I'd like to see that happen a lot more. Um, also, I believe that Dragons of Cartier is going to be shit. Now, the reason I think that is because they're leaning it a lot towards warriors fighting dragons, and I don't know if you guys have seen that, but I, I feel like that's just going to be a uh, whole knights versus dragons thing again, where it's just like, eh, what's the point? So, um, I don't, I don't know where we're going with that, and hopefully it ends up okay, but I don't know. Um, and the whole time travel thing, people have been telling me that they time travel during Tarkir, like, uh, cons, but I think what happens is that, um, like, they're in cons. They might tra time travel to cons and then time travel again, because I'm pretty sure during cons, all the dragons are dead. Because... Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, there's a lot of evidence po pointing towards it. If you guys want me to like back that up a ton, uh, I certainly will. But um, I don't know if you guys have the same idea. I don't know if you guys uh, like that idea, or if you guys have any other ideas. So I mean, um, I I don't know. I'm I'm open to any ideas at this point. I don't know where cons is going, but um, I have an idea for a deck. So if you have if you know M fifteen really well, you know that Hoarding Dragon was reprinted. Now Hoarding Dragon allows you to tutor up any artifact. Uh, that artifact is then uh, exiled underneath Hoarding Dragon and stuck there until Hoarding Dragon dies. But obviously you can kill off Hoarding Dragons with your own kill spells. Uh, so Eldrazi might be coming out, but I don't really need that. Um, Ugin's Nexus is coming out or going to be in cons. So what I'm thinking is that. You use, uh, what is it, Hoarding Dragon to tutor up Ugin's Nexus. You then kill off Hoarding Dragon, place it down Ugin, er, Ugin's Nexus. Then you Shrapnel Blast off of Ugin's Nexus, attack, or well, you'd attack and then Shrapnel Blast to Ugin's Nexus, attack again, uh, maybe Shrapnel Blast something else, and then you got that going for you. Now, Lens of Clarity is kind of the thing that'll wreck that, because if you're reading it right now, Allows you to see right through Hoarding Dragon, which kind of sucks. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do about it. I don't, if you guys think that's a good idea, please tell me because I do want to make that deck. Um, what you're seeing right now is the first charm in a while, the Sutal charm, I think it's called. Um, so, I think it is the Sutal charm. Let me check really quick. Um, yeah, Sutal, Sutal. Su Sutai? Sutai charm. Now, um, if you read it, it does say, uh, choose one, destroy target monocolored creature, destroy target artifact or enchantment, draw two cards, then discard a card. So, I think charms are coming back, and I kind of like that, because Simic charm and that charm and stuff like that, those are really fun to play, because it kind of just added a whole new twist to the game. Um, I mean, they were really cheap. So... Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, um, like, subscribe, tell your friends, uh, all that good stuff. Um, and always remember the comments section is an open forum for all of you. I love to hear from you guys. I love to talk to you guys and all that good stuff. So, uh, ag again, the link to the site that we use will be in the description. Uh, what else? Again, comments section. Always, always welcome there, guys. Uh... I guess that's it. Thank you for watching, guys. See you in the next